Item Number SCP-2085 Object Class Multiple Anomalous Organization Anomalous Human Modified Uncategorized Anomaly Containment Class Active Hazard Rating Yellow Standard Containment Policies Six one-person residential modules Wireless signal jammers installed Amenity Restriction Electronics Dietary Restriction Liquid Diet SCP-2085-B See Document 2085-B-MED Dietary Restriction Vegetarian SCP-2085-A1 and SCP-2085-A3 Bi-weekly Psychological Review Dr. Singh Dr. Summers Once monthly group phone call Supervised Special Containment Procedures No attempts to isolate or remove SCP-2085-1 are authorized until SCP-2085-B's containment implants can be effectively replicated. In the case of SCP-2085-1 overcoming SCP-2085-B's containment implants, SCP-2085-B and SCP-2085-1 are to be terminated immediately. SCP-2085-A specimens are to be sedated and restrained before removal from containment chambers or in any situation requiring entry to the containment chamber. In the event of successful removal and containment of SCP-2085-1, description: SCP-2085 is a militant anarchist organization consisting of six cybernetically enhanced individuals. A1 through A5 and B, operating under the name Kuroi Usagi Shiden, Black Rabbit Company. SCP-2085 has been linked, through what member testimony can be verified, to numerous criminal and terrorist incidents occurring between 2000 and 2000 throughout East Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia and Oceania, and Western North America. SCP-2085's base of operations, if extant, is unknown, as are its connections to any other groups. The recovered assets of the group consist solely of equipment held upon recovery. The existence of other assets is presumed, but such caches have not been found. Verified operations include smuggling, theft, assault, vandalism, kidnapping, extortion, property damage, possessing of fissile materials, corporate sabotage, embezzlement, identity theft, fraud, copyright infringement, piracy, possession of narcotics with intent to sell, possession, transport and sale of anomalous items, and tax evasion. The targets of these operations are primarily organized crime, hate groups, or groups otherwise classified as of interest, strikes against governmental, military or police targets while enthusiastically supported by the members of SCP-2085, appear to be much less opportunistic than their standard activities. SCP-2085's operations are typically organized to minimize the chance of civilian casualties and to maximize material and morale damage to their target. All offers made by the Foundation regarding cooperative agreements have been unilaterally rejected by all members of SCP-2085. Three of six explicitly stated death were preferable to working alongside the Foundation. SCP-2085-A SCP-2085-A subjects are five adult female augmented humans, designated SCP-2085-A1 through SCP-2085-A5. Subjects are genetic chimeras, each with an estimated six to ten different gene donors. Subjects are fluent in Japanese. Mandarin Chinese, Cantonese, Korean, Russian, and English, with additional languages varying by individual. All subjects display behaviors typical of high-functioning autism spectrum disorder. Subjects display an array of genetic and cybernetic enhancements, including Cosmetic genetic splices of Felis Catus physiology, including ears, tails, and hair coloration. Tails are prehensile and capable of holding small objects. Grip pads on hands and feet. 
retractable fingertip blades, ocular implants with thermal vision, heads-up display, and recording functionality, carbon nano-weave muscle fiber augmentation and reinforced endoskeleton, brain-computer interface with internal hard drive, wireless communication suite with local tactical network, drug glands providing pain dampening, heightened sensory awareness, and altered pheromones. These implants are uniform in design and show minimal signs of modification after installation. Some cosmetic alterations have been made more recently. See document SCP-2085-AEXP for further information. SCP-2085-B SCP-2085-B is an adult male human bearing the following cybernetic and genetic enhancements. Adaptation of the gastrointestinal tract for a liquid diet. Esophageal input port and waste output port are integrated into the suit. Modifications to regulate sweat, reduce abrasion damage from extended suit usage, and aid in skin regeneration. Removal of genitalia. Replacement of 11 missing digits on hands and feet. Internal drug pump, typically used for painkillers. Containment implants for SCP-2085-1 See Document 2085-B-EXP for extended information on all known enhancements. These modifications were accrued over a period of several years, the oldest stated to be installed in 2000, and the most recent, dating to three weeks before containment, from multiple sources, none of which have yet been disclosed, and are of significantly lower quality than those used by SCP-2085-A. Many parts of the SCP-2085-1 containment implants have been replaced or modified. SCP-2085-B is in generally poor health, suffering from vitamin D deficiency, now less than due to the changes in diet, acute radiation syndrome, symptoms indicated at least three doses of two gray, and heavy scarring from severe and repeated skin ulceration. SCP-2085-B is fluent in English and limited Japanese, and is generally cooperative with staff. SCP-2085-B wears an S-1035 ACES at all times, generally accompanied by a bathrobe and red felt wizard's hat. Advanced Crew Escape Suit SCP-2085-B has been permitted to retain possession of these items to encourage further cooperation. SCP-2085-1 SCP-2085-1 is a fibrous mass of self-replicating carbon nanomaterials within SCP-2085-B's chest cavity, with growth protruding into the liver, pancreas, gallbladder, spinal cord, and left lung. The growth of the SCP-2085-1 and its consumption of SCP-2085-B's body tissues has been impeded through the addition of various containment implants used to sever communication between growth sections and control nodes and counter the replication process. SCP-2085-1's rate of replication without the influence of these containment implants is unknown. SCP-2085-1's periods of activities occur, on average, once every three months. The process lasts up to 15 minutes and causes SCP-2085-B intense pain. SCP-2085-B is claimed to communicate with SCP-2085-1 during these activity periods, though this claim has not been verified. Recovery Report The Foundation initially became aware of SCP-2085 on August 13, 2000 after the execution killings of four members of in Texas. All four individuals were shot in the head before being hung from the sign of an abandoned gas station along route. A sign was affixed to each around the neck proclaiming, Fascist Slaver Rapist. Among those killed was Agent who served as a federal liaison with the Special Personnel Procurement Program. State and federal law enforcement were deployed, making initial contact with SCP-2085 at 1647 the following day. Recovery agents were deployed after confirmation of anomaly. Containment confirmed at 0344 on August 17, 2000 in Wyoming, 
and transported to site for processing. At the time of capture, total casualties caused by SCP-2085 numbered Timeline of motions filed regarding SCP-2085 August 18, 2000 Internal Security Department files a motion with the Board of Project Review, requesting immediate termination of the subjects on the grounds of enemy combatant status and that they do not qualify for the protections of a contained anomaly, citing precedent and similar combat interactions with members of GOI, GOI, and GOI. August 25, 2000 Motion struck down. Incomplete threat assessment of anomaly. August 25, 2000 Internal Security Department files motion with Director's Committee, requesting transfer of subjects to ISD custody from Residential Research Department, citing SCP-2085 as active security threat and anti-Foundation ideological hazard. September 4, 2000 Director's Committee fails to reach two-third majority. Case dismissed. September 4, 2000 Internal Security Department Appeals Committee Ruling September 12, 2000 Dr. B and Research Team present preliminary observations to Director's Committee. September 15, 2000 Director's Committee fails to reach two-third majority. Case transferred to Overseer Council. September 22, 2000 Overseer Council votes 7 to 6 in favor of Dr. B authority over SCP-2085 to remain with Residential Research Department. September 23, 2000 Internal Security Department appeals Overseer Council ruling, pending. Interview Logs SCP-2085-A1 Date of birth unknown. Place of birth unknown. Documented. August 17, 2000. Height 200 cm. Weight 83 kg. Hair calico. Eyes green. Other notes. Sleeve tattoo on right arm. Prominent facial scar. Early interview. Good morning. My name is. I'll be running your interview today. Please state your name for the record. Subject sits down at interview table. I speak English. Ah, of course. Please state your name. Major Motoko Kusanagi, representing the Black Rabbit Company. All names provided by SCP-2085-A subjects have been aliases drawn from fiction. Each member has a consistent pool of approximately 15 names. And you are the commander of this organization, correct? Until someone else is elected to the position, yes. Noted. Now if you would give me an overview of your organization, please. Goals, history of activity, and so on. SCP-2085-A1 pauses. Subject looks confused for a moment before laughing. What's funny? We killed at least a dozen of your people and led you on a four-state car chase and you're tossing me softball questions over coffee and donuts. You're not the U.S. government. Wait, hold on. Did you receive an orientation packet? It would have been a dark gray folder with a logo and new resident orientation printed on the front. I have not. You've given me three sets of clothing and a toiletry kit. I'm terribly sorry. That should have been included with your things. No members of SCP-2085 were presented with orientation packets at intake due to clerical error. This was rectified prior to the subsequent entry interviews. I represent a non-governmental research organization that deals with unusual circumstances such as yourself. I'll make sure you get a packet as soon as we're done here. Just rest assured that you and your associates are safe. In the loving bosom of the men in black. It's not as bad as you think, I promise. A prison is no less a prison for the softness of its bedsheets. Hmm, we're getting off topic, I think. You were about to tell me about the aim of your organization. Escape. Until then, direct action towards the destruction of fascism and the dismantling of the capitalist and colonial structures that support it. Everything else is commentary. You could let us go, you know. 
I'm afraid that's not an option right now. There's a door right there. All you need to do is unlock it. We'll see ourselves out. I'm sorry, but… But they'll shoot you for it, won't they? I thought so. Is there anything else you'd like to say? This isn't our home. We were just born here. The open road still softly calls second star to the right, straight on till morning. End log. SCP-2085-A2 Date of birth, unknown. Place of birth, unknown. Documented. August 17, 2000 Height, 209 cm Weight, 124 kg Hair, black, white bicolor Eyes green. Other notes. Generally positive interactions with Foundation personnel, and willing to answer questions. Accuracy of statements is questionable. It is unknown that this is deliberate misinformation. Has removed sleeves from all provided uniforms. Good morning. My name is… I'll be running your entry interview. Let's start with your name. Millie Thompson. Wait, shit. Used that one last time. Noi. Call me Noi. Ah, well, thank you, miss. Uh, Noi. Now, before we get started with the official questions, my associates wanted me to ask you why you call yourselves the Black Rabbit Company. They were expecting Black Cat. Well, they're the rabbit on the moon, not a cat. Association of the dark patches on the moon with the shape of a rabbit is a common motive in Chinese, Japanese, and Korean folklore. And there was already a black cat company out there when we were coming up with the name. Some French art burglars or something. I see. You're not the first person to ask, don't worry. I wanted to call it the Cheesecake Gun Show Brigade, and that got shot down. Shame. I like that one. On to the real questions. What's your position within the Black Rabbit Company? SCP-2085-A2 flexes arms, smiles. I use my absolute goddamn enormity to beat the shit out of fascists. Thoroughly effective, no doubt. Can you tell me anything about the Black Rabbit Company's activities prior to your stay here? Well, you already know about the car chase. Have you talked to the Major yet? We have. She didn't give us much in the way of specifics. Hmm. Okay, so we do a little bit of everything, I guess. Assassinations, heist, security, deliveries. Birthday parties? Birthday parties? It was great. Minnie Mae went as the magician, and she somehow managed to get Asuka and Rei into clown suits with her assistants. I have no idea how she pulled that off. Later interviews confirmed these nicknames refer to A3, A4, and A5. Anyway, they had just cut the cake when the skinheads showed up and the gunfight started. This was a child's birthday party, correct? Am I understanding this correctly? Yeah, the kids fucking loved it. I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> You'll get used to it. I can keep going if you like. Got nothing but time to kill. Sure. Okay, so, there was the time we were up in Kamchatka and breaking into this old Soviet bunker, right? Place hadn't been opened up in over 30 years and was overrun by psychics, and they're just sitting on some A-grade enriched plutonium. Wizard managed to talk them into a deal and get us on the inside. The Black Lotus dust we were selling them was all fake, of course, but they figured it out before we could get out, and so everyone starts blasting. SCP-2085-A2 continues in this manner for 3 hours and 53 minutes. Events described were, in order, raid on a sealed Soviet-era bunker with presumed GRU-P connections, breakup of a sex trafficking ring in Shanghai, a spate of anti-police harassment incidents under the guise of a San Francisco pizza delivery service, a raid on a white supremacist militia in Oregon, the bombing of multiple cryptocurrency farms, ransomware attacks against Silicon Valley tech startups, and the declaration of SCP-2085-A4 as Queen of Thailand. End log. SCP-2085-A3 Date of birth unknown. Place of birth unknown. Documented August 17, 2000 Height 
185 cm Weight 79 kg Hair Brown mackerel tabby Eyes Yellow Other Notes Currently shows signs of depression due to extended isolation. Potentially willing to divulge sensitive information out of concern for fellow group members. Good afternoon. My name is… I'll be doing your entry interview. Please state your name for the record. Aisha Clan Clan. And your position within the company? Field Medic. Translator. Support Crew. What can you tell me about your friend Wizard's condition? Oh, that? Wizard always says he doesn't want to make us worry about him, but we know what to do in case he has an episode. And what do you do when it happens? We get him his toolkit, and if we need to do anything else, he tells us then. Most of the time he can do it himself, but sometimes he needs more help than we can do in the field. When that happens, we have to contact some extra help. Can you tell me anything about these people? Uh, no, not really. They keep to themselves. Alright. If you could tell me anything else about his condition, please. Wizard says Red talks to him, whispers all this horrible stuff to him when it's growing. That it's just going to eat away with him until there's nothing left. And that's, that's what's going to happen to everyone eventually. It makes sense for a cancer. I haven't heard it. Can you tell me anything about Wizard's history? What he did before joining the company? Not really. He mentioned a while ago that he had a family, but he never brought it up again. They probably think he's dead or that he ran off or something. He doesn't really have anything left from back then, so we're his family now. A man doesn't toss his old life away if there was something worth keeping hold of. End log. Written statement by SCP-2085-A3 2000 Kill us already. If you want our eyes and bones and the computers in our brains, take it all. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But get it over with already. Kill us or let us go. And I don't care if we're thrown out blind and crippled, because at least then we're free of you. You give us three meals a day and a bed and a few books, and you pretend like it justifies locking us in here like animals, in cages or dolls on a shelf. You learn how to be polite, how to dress up in lab coats and say please and thank you, and pretend like you have souls. Who do you think you're fooling? We know who you are, you and your kin. You're all the fucking same, no matter if you say it's for state or god or self-interest. You just like hurting people. You'll build an empire on corpses and call it a garden. After all we've done, all we've been able to survive, we're right back in the place we escaped. Just pretty women in boxes. We were going to get to space. We were going to build a ship, and we'd go all the way up past the sky and look down at the world, and we would've won. We would've fucking won. We would be alive, and we could show everyone that it's okay, that they can be free too, that they can be alive. We'd help them, and now… nothing. You've won, okay? You fucking won. I just want to see my sisters again. Incident 2085-A3-2 2000 SCP-2085-A3 reports self-harm and suicidal ideation to Dr. Singh during psychological review. Crisis plan implemented. SCP-2085-A3 enrolled in art therapy course at recommendation of Dr. Singh. Incident 2085-A33 2000 SCP-2085-A3 makes emergency phone call to SCP-2085-A2, as per crisis plan, lasting one hour and nine minutes. Follow-up phone calls have continued according to crisis plan schedule. SCP-2085-A4 Date of birth unknown. Place of birth unknown. Documented August 17, 2000. Height 203 cm, weight 76 kg, hair red long hair, eyes orange. Other notes extremely hostile, has refused to cooperate in any way, confirmed by other members of Cyber Warfare Specialist. Entry Interview 
Please state your name for the record. SCP-2085-A4 raises middle finger of right hand. Get on your knees and suck it. I understand your frustration, but cooperation will benefit you in the long run. Please state your name. SCP-2085-A4 raises middle finger of other hand. I said, get my goddamn dick in your goddamn mouth and suck it, you inbred bootlicker. If you require some extra time to calm yourself, then, let me use smaller words. You, points at researcher, go, mimes walking two fingers across the opposite palm, buck, makes arm of honor gesture, your mother, makes wide circular gesture, in the ass, stands up, turns, points to rear. I will give you one more chance. Your cooperation will determine the privileges you'll receive in the future. State your name. Short pause. SCP-2085-A4 seems to contemplate the offer. Dio Brando. I suppose that will do. Now, Miss Dio. SCP-2085-A4 punches observation divider, creating a large crack in the pane. Subject smiles. SCP-2085-A4 draws back fist, flexes fingers, punches the biter again, causing more cracks. Subject laughs. Researcher activates lockdown procedures. Protective shutter is lowered. Aerosol sedatives are pumped into containment unit. SCP-2085-A4 continues punching barrier as researcher exits interview room. SCP-2085-A4 is muffled screaming. CUNT! Incident 2085-A4-11 2000 SCP-2085-A4 claimed willingness to provide video logs of the group's former operations, in exchange for the lifting of sanctions placed upon the subject. The offer was accepted, however, due to SCP-2085-A4's behavioral history. The provided file was accessed in an isolated network by D-Class personnel in the case of viral, mimetic, or cognitohazardous agents. The provided video file, titled Backup.avi, consisted of a two-hour-long video of a feces-filled toilet, presumably recorded from SCP-2085-A4's point of view, accompanied by an audio loop of the folk song Coral Beniki, as performed by the Red Army Choir. The contained audiovisual cognitohazard induced anaphylaxis and exuded of diarrhea in the observing D-Class subject. D-Class subject died four minutes after initial access of the file from blood loss and oxygen deprivation. File was disposed of without incident. Sanctions placed upon SCP-2085-A4 have remained in place. SCP-2085-A5 Date of birth unknown Place of birth unknown. Documented, August 17, 2000. Height, 194 centimeters. Weight, 80 kilograms. Hair, silver blue. Eyes blue. Other notes: While not hostile, subject had refused to cooperate or provide information. Nose is deformed from numerous breaks. Entry interview. Please state your name for the record. Molly Millions. Alright. What's your role within the company? I put holes in heads using very fast bits of lead from a great distance. Can you tell me about the company's prior activities? No. Can you tell me about Wizard? No. Can you tell me about Red? No. Are you willing to answer any questions at all? No. Dare I ask why you agreed to an interview? I'm bored. Wasting your time is fun. Researcher Ends interview without further comment. Incident 2085-A5-1 2000 The following note was given to staff by SCP-2085-A5. It is the first communication between SCP-2085-A5 and staff since the entry interview. The note was as follows. I take a hammer and I break my legs. I break them for the better. Incident 2085-A5-2 2000 Upon receiving breakfast, 
SCP-2085-A5 sat down and proceeded to sing Happy Birthday before eating. Of note is the use of us for the recipient. Incident 2085-A5-3 2000 At 0433, SCP-2085-A5 stared directly in the camera for, without blinking, for 3 minutes 10 seconds before saying, I thought what I'd do was, I'd pretend I was one of those deaf youths. Or should I? Incident 2085-A5-4 2000 At 2030, SCP-2085-A5 began playing music through implanted speakers, loud enough to be heard outside the containment chamber. This continued for the next 18 hours. SCP-2085-A5 slept through the entire incident. SCP-2085-B Date of birth unknown Place of birth unknown. Documented, August 17, 2000. Height, 169 centimeters. Weight, 68 kilograms. Hair, none. Eyes, brown. Other notes: Cooperative with staff. Nationality cannot be confirmed. Age cannot be confirmed. Log begins. Excuse me. My name is researcher. Could I ask you a few questions? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Sure. Hold on a tick. SCP-2085-B puts on bathrobe and wizard hat, moves chair to interview window, and sits down. There we go. Ask away. Alright. First, we were wondering if you'd be able to tell us about your history, your name, where you're from, basic information like that. Uh, I'm a space wizard. I come from space. That's not particularly helpful, sir. SCP-2085-B <clears throat> SCP shrugs. Call me Major Tom if you like. It really isn't important. I'm just a guy with a hat. If Joe Everyman and John Doe were a gay couple, I would be the nameless neighbor. I see. With that out of the way, we were wondering if you could tell us about your associates, how you met, how the company formed, and so on. Interesting story there. I was running around trying to fix this shit, taps chest, scraping by with implants for some pretty shady characters. One of them turned out to do custom jobs for corporate execs who wanted some muscle or rich perverts who wanted sex toys. I was at the clinic to get some new parts, and when I'm going through the installation process, BOOM! Big explosion, and those five came barging out guns blazing. I start booking it with my chest half open, because what else do you do? And then there was a lot of scrambling around trying not to get shot by the guy's business partners, and I sort of just end up trailing along as they flee the scene. Then we steal a boat and hightail it out of Japan. And then everything falls together. The company. Me. We're out there on the ocean, stargazing and stuffing ourselves with instant ramen and cheap beer. And for the first time in ages. Any of us are somewhere we want to be. You better be treating them well. We're doing everything we can. Good. Could you explain to us the entity currently living inside you? Ah, Red. There's a lot to unpack. We have time. Red is, I don't know, a Von Neumann probe? Some kind of god thing cast down out of the heavens? I don't know. It was inside a meteor and I was the first person on the scene. It was, or will be, immensely powerful. Kardashev scale powerful. I'm afraid that this is mostly speculation. I'm working off what I get when its dreams drift into mind, or when it gets active enough to try and talk directly. You can communicate with it? No. It's one way, for now at least. I don't think it can hear me. It just rants, mashes everything together. And what does it say to you? Not so much words as just the feeling of it all. A lot of it I can't understand, but alright. It's a cancer. It grows and grows. It eats and grows. It gets more complex until whatever it's living in starts breaking down. But it will outlive its host. It'll keep growing. More food. More complex food. It dreams of a universe that's been forced into a final orderly shape where it can devour all it is possible to consume, 
and so glutted on the universe floats down a perfect river of entropy until there is nothing left, forever. It can do nothing but leech and wait for the end. But it's locked in a race against that same river for who gets to eat more of the pie and it's being stonewalled. It hates us. Humanity. We're uneaten food going to waste, and we are so close and it can't get to us. Our existence is an affront, a mar on its perfect universe. It hates me most of all, I think. I keep on going, and every second I stay alive and Red stays suppressed, that's energy down the drain that it can't ever get back. I think it might be afraid that I might lose. I don't think it's ever met resistance before. It tries to bargain with me, I think. It's not good at it. It just alternates between threatening more pain or offering some sort of perpetuation of consciousness. I don't think it cares which I choose, just that I break. I read a story once, where there was a little red egg that can give you exactly what you want the most, and the cost is what you love best. That's red, waiting, right in here, taps chest, for me to take that deal. It's called my bluff, and I intend to prove it wrong. Hmm. One last question. Why the costume? This? Just a symbol. A superhero thing. Easier to believe in than a person most of the time. Symbols are simple. People are messy. People can let you down. The world makes it difficult for people to believe in people. So we make do with symbols. And what do you want people to believe in? What people could be. What they can do. That it doesn't have to end like this. That we can make something better. Be something better. That we can keep going after we get the shit kicked out of us. That's easy to say. You take a look outside and we're all insane. Just a bunch of evil, angry apes murdering each other on a little ball of dirt, spinning pointlessly through nothing, doomed to a brief hiccup of existence before we extinguish ourselves. And in our brief glimmer of awareness, with all the beauty of the cosmos arrayed before us, we chose to build a meat grinder out of our broken dreams and locked ourselves inside, content to sit in our box and sit there staring at the walls, floating down the river of entropy until we die. That's what we're fighting against. I've had six months to live for over five years now, and I don't want to meet Curtain Call with nothing to show for it. Every day I wake up is borrowed time that I can't pay back, and eventually it's going to just cut to black, and if it's not today, then it might as well be tomorrow. They're setting the world on fire out there, gutting down kids in the street, stuffing folks with nowhere to go behind fences like they're cattle, figuring out new ways to own the ideas in your head while the topsoil blows away and the groundwater dries up. I can't save the world on my own, but I have to do something. I'm fucking terrified, you know. Scared of dying. Scared of living to see the future. But it's easier with them around. I want to watch the sun rise from orbit. Me and the girls, watching the sun come up. Then I can die. I can die a free man. And maybe folks will say I was a good man. And the girls will launch my body into the sun. Send me back to Stardust. Yeah. That'll be a good way to go. In that moment, I will be lifted away from this wretched place and be free at last, and my soul will rejoice with all the brightness of the heavens. Second star to the right, straight on till morning. You know how it goes. End log. <laughs>